last chance opportunity to headline WrestleMania. By this point, The Rock vs. John Cena, the unasked for rematch, has already been made official as the main event of WrestleMania 29, so I don't see what any of these six guys could possibly be headlining. Also, why are neither the WWE Champion nor the World Heavyweight Champion competing in the Elimination Chamber match, more specifically The Rock, since John Cena selected the WWE Championship from his Royal Rumble prize? Is it just because Hollywood doesn't want him hurt? Give me a break, they wouldn't have allowed Rock to compete in the first place. Also, also, The Rock being the first ever part-time WWE Champion in the dreaded part-time era. Hope it stops one day, seriously. Welcome to the Shield of Justice. Roman Reigns clearly looks disinterested in working with the Shield. Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose are pumped up. Meanwhile, Roman could care less. I did not get Man, the editing of this video promo is just awful. I'm betting that WWE intentionally had CM Punk say, I did not get screwed when they tossed the clips around. CM Punk would be great at Cinemasins 2 expansion. This ain't a show of favoritism, but he does have a good point. Day in, day out, night in, night out, CM Punk showed up all the time and wrestled all the time. The Rock doesn't earn shit just because he's The Rock. It's a spit in the face of wrestlers who deserve it, and I'm ranting too much. 16 pay-per-views on a row sign. Damn it, that's true, this guy works more in WWE than the current WWE Champion does. World Heavyweight Champion! Alright, if we're just gonna protect The Rock from the dangers of the Elimination Chamber, then I guess I can understand. But what the hell is Alberto Del Rio's excuse for not defending the World Heavyweight Championship inside the Elimination Chamber? JBL's microphone is literally pressed against his face. That might explain why his face is stuck in that forced smile. But that is the road to Wrestle Mode Mania. Wrestle Mode Mania. I would have honestly removed a sin, maybe even two, if the Big Show accidentally kicked the camera away when swinging his leg over the top rope. Everybody ready to get it on and party! That's what she said! This sequence of Alberto Del Rio pouring orange paint on the Big Show is ruined by all the paint splattering on the camera and nearly obstructing the entire view. Doesn't this thing have a zoom in feature so it could be a distance away? Del Rio has been a great world champion! It's only been a month. He still needs more time before he can be considered a great world champion. Alberto is getting exactly what he deserves. Quit your cheerleading, JBL. Big Show has bullied people his entire career. Well, except for the many thousand times Big Show was a good guy. But of course, he's a bad guy for this month, so we have to immediately forget all about the good things. Deserves. Says he Don't you shush me. Of the fiery Alberto Del Rio. You can clearly see Big Show falling over way before Alberto ever connected with any of those kicks. Select your memory for John Bradshaw later tonight. Come on. Will you two just shut the fuck up and commentate the action going on in the ring, or do I have to create a time machine and do commentary myself? And, oh, and he squashes Del Rio! Indeed, the Big Show has squashed Alberto Del Rio by missing him completely in that splash move. The referee is ignoring the fact that Big Show's leg is under the ropes, thus out of bounds. I bet he is on Alberto Del Rio's payroll. Get the advantage, Ricardo's got an answer! Wait, Ricardo's got an answer, Jerry? Don't seem to recall Ricardo Rodriguez being the one facing the Big Show tonight. Del Rio trying to fight out of this in a- What? Believe for Del Rio. I give Alberto credit. Oh he what? And a terrific champion. Hold on a second. Earlier during the entrances and even throughout this entire match, JBL has been criticizing Alberto Del Rio for being the type of champion he was. But now all of a sudden he switches boats and proclaims him to be a terrific champion? Make up your freaking mind. Even when he is a babyface, Alberto Del Rio still needs the help of Ricardo Rodriguez in order to win his matches. The fans don't care because they're good guys. It's okay to interfere and break rules if they're good guys. Wait for it. And Alberto Del Rio. It's as if Big Show was literally asking to get that bucket kicked against his head. He picks it up and randomly places it on the side of his head for no reason, making him go out like an idiot in the end. Also, the referee saw Alberto technically whack an illegal weapon on Big Show's head and didn't call for the disqualification. Payroll confirmed. Antonio. The fans in attendance should at least give Antonio Cesaro credit for waving the United States flag representing the country as the United States champion, even though he's from Switzerland. The cameramen are dicks to the Miz by showing only his back as he makes his entrance to the ring. Look at Miz! Miz trying to steal one here! Commentator stupidly refers to a legal roll-up as stealing the victory cliche. We're only half an hour into this night. Fingers crossed I don't get too pissed off. Miz. Oh, 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 look at Cesaro! That's not just amazing strength. That's also amazing timing on the way Antonio Cesaro caught the Miz in midair. Major props to him for that moment. Championship on the line. Miz trying to steal one here. Okay, that's even worse than a roll-up being referred to as stealing the victory. Now even an average pinfall is referred to as a victory steal. Either that or Michael Cole's trying to make up for all the years he had a creepy erection for The Miz by criticizing him. It's not working. We're mentally scarred for life. Get out here. 
You get a, you get a chair. Oh, come on. Antonio clearly missed Miz right there, no matter what camera angle was viewing the action. With Antonio Cesaro yet. The Miz's shoulder is heavily bandaged up because of the weeks of torture from Antonio Cesaro, but now it's magically healed when he climbs to the top rope and puts all his weight on it as he balances. Perhaps climbing turnbuckles is the healing power for shoulder injuries. Miz is not going to wait for the count out. And why would The Miz wait for a count out when he knows that he's the challenger for the United States Championship and not the actual champion? The Miz emulates the nature boy! If Antonio was willing to risk his own Cesaros just so he could escape with the United States title, then this dude's got balls. Oh shit, I just realized I made a horrible pun. Also, I guess Antonio was a dick to his own Cesaro since he made The Miz land there on purpose. Evan, he was just trying to block oh! Alright, now we're reaching Shinsuke Nakamura territory here. Or at least the inspiration for the future Shinsuke Nakamura territory. Damn you, Miz! If anything, I should be the one not talking to you! Well, why don't you try that then? Kane would be great at Cinema Sins 2 expansion. No joke, I was literally about to say that to Daniel Bryan myself. You watch my back. Okay. And I'll watch my back too. <laughs> team Hell No was the greatest tag team from 2012 to 2013. Why couldn't they last a little longer? It takes about 40 minutes for an event called Elimination Chamber to start Elimination Chambering. Also, that one moment when this match lasts about half an hour, and after it's done, there are literally no more Elimination Chamber matches left on the match card. For the next hour and a half on its own pay-per-view, the Elimination Chamber becomes a distant memory. And that's where 20 cents because this was booked poorly. Welcome to the belly of the beast. You could have gone through the entire promo setup for the Elimination Chamber without bringing that one up. Because belly of the beast sounds like a cheap comedy show, so I guess it's perfect for my show. The entire existence of the Zeb Coulter era. Also, holy shit, it's bad enough that WWE constantly has foreign wrestlers trash in the United States of America, but now they decide to have Americans trash their own country. What an absolutely insane foreshadowing of the actual future. I hold the microphone, I hold the power. CM Punk is somehow not pissed off backstage after hearing Jack Swagger stealing his lines about a microphone being considered power in WWE. I would skip. I wonder if Kane will fit in Jack Swagger's America. Who cares, honestly? The whole Jack Swagger's America thing is one of the most annoying gimmicks ever, so why should Kane care about it? I'm interested to see how Mark Henry is going to fit. By this point, we have seen wrestlers like The Big Show, The Great Khali, and even Big Daddy V fitting inside the chamber pods, so there's no reason to think that Mark Henry can't fit inside it as well. That's strange, Jerry Lawler jumps at the sudden noise of Chris Jericho's pyrotechnics, yet when Kane's pyro exploded earlier, no reaction whatsoever. And unlike Kane, we actually knew that Chris was about to show up based off the fact that he's the last man to enter the cage. Chris Jericho mocks Daniel Bryan by listening to the Y2J chants, figuring it would irritate Daniel. What Chris failed to realize is Daniel only gets irritated by the S chants. Remember, if Jericho taps out here! Michael Cole says this rule as if he believes Chris freaking Jericho of all wrestlers would be eliminated this early on in the chamber. And Bryan... Chris should have actually aimed Daniel at Kane's pod. That would have been a funny coincidence that Team Hell No saying they would have each other's back. Mention right here! Uh, no. I swear, the spotlight was focused on Randy Orton when the buzzer hit. Though, not as bad as 2008 when the spotlight couldn't make up its mind for almost five seconds. Anyone remember that? Check the No Way Out 2008 sins. In their hurts. Jericho! Jack Swagger was watching Chris Jericho the entire time and could have sidestepped out of the way or countered at any moment. Oh, Jericho! Oof. Sorry, but there is no way Chris was hurt on the steel floor the way he landed on his feet and slowly tipped over. Daniel Bryan accidentally mooning Kane. Although, given how Team Hell No treats one another, I wouldn't be surprised if that was actually intentional. Uh, technician? Yeah, you can stop taking a nap. The countdown expired and it's time to unveil the next participant. Well, look on the bright side. Daniel kept his word to Kane when he said he'd have his back. In order to execute that roll-up, Daniel Bryan had to be behind Kane's back. So I don't see what Kane would be so pissed off about. It has been laid out by Bryan. Daniel Bryan is addicted to Kane's big red machines. Time for the world to find out how dangerous Randy Orton can be. Because the world totally doesn't already know how dangerous Randy Orton can be. After all, he's only been around for 11 years. From that spot, number five. Wait a minute, they actually draw numbers when they enter the Elimination Chamber? Well, so much for the completely random selection of the spotlight, dumbass. You just revealed the plot! Road to WrestleMania! Based on how pumped up and fired up that Mark Henry was to get into the match the last few minutes, the referee should have pretended that his door was stuck for a moment just to piss him off. That would have been hilarious. It's just a prank, bro! Oh, 
You know, for once, I'd like to see someone get thrown into a pod that has an occupant inside of it, accidentally sending them free into the match. Is it seriously a surprise to Michael Cole that Mark Henry can hit a world's strongest slam on Kane with ease? Because it's not a surprise to everyone else. Don't mind me, guys. I'm just chilling out in the pod, catching my breath. Carry on. Earlier, Mark Henry was on a rampage, eliminating Kane and Daniel Bryan with consecutive world's strongest slams. But now when he has the chance to do the same thing to Jack Swagger and Chris Jericho, let's just take our time. Don't pose and yell before you splash onto your opponents. Just freaking do it! Man, you just know Mark Henry's going to lose at this moment because of that. And now Swagger, oh, Jericho, oh, 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 oh. Group of wrestlers team up and connect their finishing moves on the biggest threat causing the elimination cliche. It's only after he's already been eliminated when Mark Henry realizes he could have just hit the world's strongest slam on everyone before they teamed up on him. Also, post-elimination assault. Oh, like the Patriot Act, he calls it now. Referring to the ankle lock as the Patriot Act? Honestly, it doesn't sound as devastating as ankle lock. Might explain why the name doesn't last. He's gotta get him right over out of his belly. Oh, what are you doing, Randy? I'm with Jerry Lawler on this one. Why would Randy Orton interrupt a possible elimination? Chris Jericho was so close to making Jack Swagger tap to what Jack would have honestly referred to as the border walls. Thank God that was never made to a reality because Border Walls would have been one of the biggest failures ever. I gotta admit, I did not expect Jack Swagger to suddenly win the Elimination Chamber match that quickly and become the new number one contender. That was more out of nowhere than an RKO. Although, for the remaining hour and 40 minutes of this event titled Elimination Chamber, guess what you're not gonna see? Honestly, this match could work inside the Elimination Chamber. We'd have the first ever six-man tag team Elimination Chamber match. One member of each team competes in the ring, the remaining two members of each team locked inside the pot. At one point, a team has a two-on-one advantage. Win by eliminating your opponent's entire team. Brilliant idea, missed. Marry my wife John Cena sign. Boy, what are the odds that this asshole is getting divorced for joking about ending his marriage? Ryback's non-pyro pyro. I don't think there's anyone that has bigger issues with the shield than this man. I know, right? Ryback probably whined about the shield several times on his podcast. I mean, what? Did I turn this oh! Pre-match assault. Also because of the absolute chaos and carnage that these two teams have put upon each other, a simple six-man tag team match with traditional tag rules is a bad idea. Alright, this triple vertical suplexes by John Cena, Ryback, and Sheamus on each member of the Shield was entertaining. I'll give them a send off for that. Six foot four, he's 225 pounds from Cincinnati, Ohio. Very nice. Though Dean Ambrose's height, weight, and point of origin is not exactly relevant to this match unless he has a hidden power from Cincinnati. Sheamus getting kinky with Dean Ambrose. WWE had so many problems and injustices. Compared to the future of this company, I'm not surprised that we hardly noticed any problems or injustices. These days, too easy to find one. Dean Ambrose reaches over to tag one of his teammates, but doesn't realize there's nobody in the corner that he's reaching for. Hey, they win this match, then we can talk. Normally, it's fun to hear the Let's Go Cena, Cena sucks chant. Unfortunately, almost everyone is off sync to the point where I can't even keep up with who's saying what. By Ambrose. The referee stops the count because of Dean Ambrose's legs being underneath the bottom rope. Only problem is, they actually weren't underneath the bottom rope at all, so he stopped the count for no valid reason. Yes. What in the hell was Ryback doing? Pacing the ring apron, but also letting Seth Rollins get that close in without striking? It's unbelievable what a Roman Reigns spending a lot of time yelling at Sheamus. John Cena's about to get to his feet, you stupid dumbass. Stay focused. They've managed to turn numbers in their favor. You guys are really Shield supporters. Jerry, you're an idiot. Neither JBL nor Michael Cole were supporting the Shield. They were bringing up how they neutralized John Cena for the past 10 minutes. Nothing wrong with being impressed by people you don't like. Well, it's about time this match picked up. The last 15 minutes of the Shield taking turns beating down John Cena was getting a little boring. Roman Reigns spearing Ryback, causing Seth Rollins to fall on top of him for the pinfall was an amazing way to end this match. The last two minutes were fun to watch. The entire existence of Dolph Ziggler's impromptu promo, because anything impromptu on pay-per-view is always a sin. This is seriously fucked up and somehow hasn't been shattered to pieces. Is your opponent right now. And if the impromptu promo wasn't bad enough, ladies and gentlemen, we present to you an impromptu match. WWE somehow has time for a random match with Dolph Ziggler and Kofi Kingston. Dolph Ziggler had the sleeper hold locked in on Kofi Kingston for the better part of 20 seconds and only now did Michael Cole realize it. Holy crap, that was bad. Well, that was quick. Booker T gave Dolph a match with Kofi Kingston as a way to shut him up. And now I bet he regrets doing that. 
Three sins added, one for each minute of this match's existence. Very dangerous! And just like that, the friendship bond between Big E and Kofi Kingston began. Every story has a great beginning, I guess. About two minutes of watching Michael Cole struggle to download the WWE app onto his phone while everyone else laughs at him for having a picture of himself in Jerry Lawler as his background. Also, just imagine if we watched Michael Cole download the WWE app only to see an error pop up, followed by his phone crashing. That would have made this moment at least entertaining. Previously on this pay-per-view that was somehow known as the Elimination Chamber. What's that mean anyways? I'm not really sure. So Tensai basically revealed that he had the Japanese markings added to his face without even knowing what they meant. It's supposed to be Japanese words of honor. My luck, it's probably a sushi menu. You see, now that was actually funny to hear Tensai guess the many possibilities what the Japanese words on his face say. Poor Tamina Snuka, this is Divas Championship match number 408,818, and she has still yet to win a single one of them. Also, this match exists because Tamina and Caitlyn had a little fight backstage on the WWE app, so in other words, another impromptu match. Can I see your screensaver one more time? Alright, we get it. Michael Cole's screensaver had himself and Jerry Lawler on it. Why is that such a creepy thing? The screensaver on my phone is a picture of myself and my brother. What's the big deal? Holy shit, just start the fucking match already! It's bad enough that this was an impromptu idea, but now we can't even start it without showing more impromptu stuff. Basically, this entire match is full of JBL and Jerry Lawler making fun of Michael Cole for a screensaver, so let's just throw in five cents to end the conversation on this video. Tonight, all over the world, including... Commentator repeats the same amount of countries watching this pay-per-view just like they did earlier in the night cliche. Sometimes I don't even think they realize they're repeating things. Man, women's matches in 2013 were absolutely horrendous. It's so freaking sad that it took so long before WWE actually gave the women a chance. The Rock can lose the WWE Championship on a counter or disqualification. The same goes to the fact that CM Punk actually believes Rock will try and do either one of those things. CM Punk with the title theft. Ball, which was against the rules that were laid out. Oh my god, please don't tell me I have to listen to these guys bickering about whether or not CM Punk was robbed of the WWE Championship at the Royal Rumble. The winner to defend against John Cena. Oh wow, what are the odds that it's going to be the same guy who crushed John Cena last year at WrestleMania? Because of how predictable this is, this match is a complete waste of time. Why would anyone acquiesce to Paul Heyman? Because Paul Heyman is a genius when it comes to strategies and anything wrestling related. Just saying, hard to argue that. Also, CM Punk takes down The Rock one time and believes now's the time to start gloating. After he faced Rock literally a month ago, why would he underestimate him? About two minutes of CM Punk trying to catch his breath and hang out with Paul Heyman while The Rock and myself get frustrated at the stalling. Do something! Playing. Oh my god! Fucking disgusting! Not just to see a wrestler spit in his opponent's face, but to also see the spit still on the opponent's face. Also, CM Punk somehow thinks this will make The Rock forget about the title and get himself disqualified. Do you not know who you are competing against, dumbass? To the table he does! The Rock desperately trying to grab CM Punk's head because it's been so long since Rock even had a fraction of hair on his head. Is Punk going to WrestleMania now? Aside from the fact that CM Punk didn't hit enough offense to put away The Rock, anytime a commentator asks the question about someone winning as a pinfall is taking place, you just know it's not going to happen. Still arguing. The referee should honestly just throw out Paul Heyman from ringside since he's getting back on the ring apron and being a dumbass. Instead of constantly arguing, I'd just throw him out entirely. This is a very awkward moment because if you recall back at the Royal Rumble event last month, these two attempted a rock bottom on the announce table and it collapsed under the combined weight. Now when they try to do it, the table doesn't even break on the impact. Spanish announce table likely enforce their capabilities. Also, copy rock infringement. The referee gets knocked down to the crucial point of the match cliche. Given Paul Heyman's continued distractions, this was clearly intentional. CM Punk is a dick to referees. Oh, oh come on, at least the first referee had a believable crash. This referee gets tripped and all of a sudden he's severely injured. Oh. Oh, yes, dude, hey. Wrestler tries to use an illegal weapon on their opponent and ends up hitting their manager, which leads to their defeat cliche. 